And this leads to Stone Cold and Triple H versus Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. I'm so happy. L- listen, I'm not happy Triple H got hurt. Right. I'm so happy the era of the two man power trip is over. And I was sure. so happy. I was so happy knowing how great this match was in hindsight. You know, I'm watching it here in 20. 20- 20 knowing it's going to be a great match checking yes they have 20 minutes to work with this is going to rule and i was more excited for this match than anything i've been excited to watch in months well i want to say quite frankly Vinny, that the finish of this match which we'll get to i mean it literally played off the finish from the night before it played off triple h's interview where he said you screw up i never screw up yes i mean i think it's abundantly clear that had he, whether or not he had gotten hurt, I'm pretty sure that we were very close to the end of the two man power trip. True. I think it was on its way out whether he got hurt or not. Now, before we get into all the details of the match, I have to say that I have said this so many times, but I need to say this again. I, I'm begging for people to listen to me, especially people that want to get into wrestling or in wrestling. Stone Cold Steve Austin is an all time, all time Hall of Famer, okay? Yep. Tell him, Brian. The thing about Steve Austin is that he worked his ass off. The same, by the way, goes for The Rock. These guys worked their ass off even when they did not have to work their ass off. A lot of people have to work their ass off if they're not... Like, Steve Austin was brought in as the ringmaster. Steve Austin was never brought from WCW with the idea of, well, this is going to be my new Hulk Hogan. He was brought in, they gave him a stupid gimmick, they were doing jack shit with him. He had to work his ass off to become Stone Cold Steve Austin. He becomes Stone Cold Steve Austin, he has his feud with Vince McMahon, he is on top of the fucking world, he destroys his neck, he's out forever, and he comes back, and he's never the same again, okay? He has every excuse to just go out there and do what he needs to do. He has every excuse to be a Hulk Hogan from 1988 on. Mm. But he didn't. He worked his ass off. He was... I mean, Benoit is... He's got one speed, okay? So, I'm kind of excluding Benoit here. And, you know, Jericho worked his ass off. And, and Hunter, I'll say more about him later. But, honestly, in some ways, Steve Austin... Steve Austin worked harder than anybody in this match. He is busting his ass, and when he got in there with Benoit, it was like they were just going to go 150 miles an hour, even if they like died in the middle of the ring. There's a spot where they're on the top rope, and Benoit's going to give him a superplex, and Benoit's all excited, obviously, because it's the biggest match of his life. He fucking runs up there, and he grabs Steve Austin, and Steve Austin is getting ready to plant his foot to, to assist... And Benoit just fucking hurts him and gives him a shoot superplex. Yeah. This match was fucking great. Mm-hmm. Even with Hunter getting hurt and being able to do nothing for the last part of the match, it was still fucking great. So, the body of the match is very simple. I would say the good guys ran wild a bit, but really everyone ran wild. Because everyone was just working their ass off trying to get... trying to trying to. Well, trying to win. <laughs> trying to beat each other up. My moral, and, real quick, by the way, Vinny, my moral... Yes. ...is to be great, you have to work harder than everyone else. Well, that's... You have yeah. to work harder than everybody else. And when you're Steve Austin, even when you're the greatest, you're still trying to work harder than everybody else. That's why he was one of the greatest of all time. So eventually, actually, it's, only, it's not even eventually. Like three minutes in, Benoit gets the crossface on Austin, but uh, uh, the rest of the Jericho and Hunter breaks up with a chair. So the bad guys have already cheated once. The heat on Benoit is like ten minutes long, and it's so simple, but it's so good. They do like a long abdominal stretch. Every old school uh, heel cheating. MJF gimmick. There's a long sleeper spot. There's a blind tag spot where the timing is perfect by all five men, including the referee. So there, there's a... Amelia is on the floor. Hunter hits the pedigree on Benoit, but there's no ref. And as we've mentioned many times, the pedigree meant doom in 2001. If the pedigree was hit, the match was over. 
Benoit, granted there was no ref there, but he survived the pedigree and the match continued. So as a result of this melee, Jericho hits a missile drop kick to set up his own hot tag. He hits the drop kick, then runs back to the apron. If you're watching, if you haven't watched this yet, and if you're going to go back and watch this, which I cannot strongly enough recommend, at this point, don't watch the men in the ring. Watch everyone in the crowd. Everyone in the building is on their feet for this hot tag. Jericho gets the hot tag. It's awesome. He's running wild on everyone. Austin tries his Thez press. Jericho does a perfect counter into the Boston Crab. And then it happens. Mm. Hunter comes up from behind to break the hold. And snap goes that quad. Does nothing. Nothing. He tore his quad running. Yeah, yep. he planted his foot wrong. Yep. And it's yeah, obviously he knew <laughs> that it was fucked up right away. But hey, here is where Hunter, for the next three minutes, however long this went, what he did, what he went through, what he overcame for the good of the show and the other people involved earned him credentials and respect and yeah. whatever other lingo you want to use. But people, people never, ever forgot it. And they were never not grateful for what he did. Well, fuck, dude. We've been watching this, and by the way, there's more to come when he comes back. This guy buried everybody. He beat everyone. He won, like, bodies in his wake. And Man. even on this very show, Steve Austin is his underling. Yeah. But when the chips were down, he tore his quad in the middle of this match. And let me tell you something about tearing your quad. He had every reason to just end the match right there. But he didn't. And he continued to work his ass off with a torn fucking quad, including getting the walls on the announce table. Yes. I mean, forget the announce table, but just being in the walls with the torn quad, that pain had to be excruciating. But he never sold it until finally the moment the final bell rang, he curled up into a fetal position and he was done. Mm -hmm. This fucking guy, after all that he did, when, when he finally had to do the honors and make two new stars, come hell or high water, he did it. Yes. I couldn't have been the only one that was watching his quad after he tore it, mm -hmm. just looking to see physically what it looked like. Uh, it was gross. <laughs> yeah, don't tear your quad, everyone. It's bad yeah. for you. Yeah, don't he's do out there. He he can barely put weight in the one leg. He's hopping around to prep this table. He gets up there and they they, they do the craft spot. And, and of course, Jericho talked about this talking about this in his book. And he's like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Basically, and Hunter said, "Just fucking do it." And Jericho turned him over, and it's a Boston Crab. But Jericho was doing everything in his power to do this Boston Crab without falling over, but put as little pressure as possible on Hunter. Mm -hmm. And that's not the finish, by the way. They're out there doing that. Meanwhile, Austin's in the ring with Benoit. He has a stunner on Benoit, but Jericho yanks the ref out of the ring. So Bear, uh, Benoit in this match survived the pedigree and the stunner. Everyone, this match is just chaos at this point. Hunter's torn his quad. Austin's knee braces are pop, pieces of the knee braces are popping off left and right. He gets his knees up to catch Jericho uh, on a, a lion salt. But when he goes for the stunner, Jericho avoids it and hits, swear to God, a Judas effect. And the lion salt. Hunter has been able to get back in the ring with his sledgehammer. Lifts it up over his head. Brings it down. But Jericho dodges. Austin gets hit with a hammer. Benoit tackles Hunter out of the ring. Jericho pins Steve Austin to win the tag team titles. And damn. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this damn. was an all-time historic match at the time. Yes. And I don't think I've watched it since it happened. Maybe we have at some point. We've done 10,000 shows, but watching it again in 2020, it was exactly, I mean, it was still an all-time historic match. It aged, it didn't age at all. It didn't age at all. It didn't age one bit. It would have been one of the greatest matches of 2020 if it had happened today. Exactly like this. 
mm-hmm. and it was so good, and the finish made sense, yes. and it played off Hunter's interview on this show and the finish of the pay-per-view, and they they went over. At first, I was furious because, you know, I knew, obviously, the finish, but fucking Hunter hits the pedigree and has a visual pin. I'm like, dude, you had one job. Get these guys over. But then later, the same thing happened with Benoit. Hit the diving headbutt on Austin, but there was no referee. So I think the same thing happened also with Jericho. And uh, anyway, it was like everybody got a visual pinfall. So then I was less angry about it. And the other thing I wanted to mention was when they did their interview earlier with Jericho and Benoit, and Benoit gives that big speech. Like, I obviously knew they won, but when I watched that interview, it was like, they're winning. Like, obviously they're winning. Like, I've watched WWE for so long that I know the interview that they do when they've decided, we're fucking doing something here tonight. Mm. And they that's the interview that he cut. Like, the interview that they cut, if they would have lost, it's like, they're sunk. They're done. They're finished. They did the promo where they had to win. And in fact, they went out there and they won. And it's fucking awesome. This was... A 12 on the granny scale. 